Hello third graders, are you ready for our lesson today? It's about division. Let's solve this problem. Jen took a handful of candy from the dish. She wants to share her candies evenly between her and three of her friends. She has 12 pieces of candy. How many candies should be given to each person? How can we help Jen to determine the number of candies each person should be given? Jen decides to take turns handing one piece of candy to each person in order until she runs out of candy. The first round, one, two, three, four. Second round, five, six, seven, eight. Third round, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just take a look. How many pieces of candy did each person get? So Jen had 12 pieces of candy. It's the total number of candies that will be shared among the four people. This is the equation we can write to solve this problem. 12 divided by 4 equals blank. This blank is how many pieces of candy did each person get? We read the equation this way. 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. This is the division sign. The number of objects being divided is called the dividend. The number by which another number is being divided is called the divisor. The answer to a division problem is called the quotient. This is another way to show a division problem. Can you label the parts? 12 is the dividend, 4 is the divisor, and 3 is the quotient. You know there are many ways to solve a division problem. We can use equal groups, repeated subtraction, arrays, or we can consider a related multiplication fact. Let's model equal groups in order to solve 20 divided by 5. First, we have to determine the number of groups needed. The divisor tells how many groups are needed. Five circles to show the five groups. The dividend, which is 20, is the number of counters that will be shared evenly among the five groups. How many counters are in each group? Each group has four counters. One, two, three, four. So the quotient is 4. 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4. Let's try another example. 12 divided by 2. So we know that we need 2 groups. 2 is the divisor. And we'll divide 12 counters evenly among the 2 groups. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We stop on 12. How many counters are inside each group? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. How does repeated subtraction help solving division? You start with the dividend and subtract the divisor over and over until you reach zero. So we'll start with the dividend 15 and we'll subtract the divisor 3. 15 minus 3 is equal to 12. We'll subtract 3, which is the divisor, over and over until we reach zero. 
12 minus 3 is equal to 9. 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. We've reached 0. We reached 0, so we stop. Now we count how many times you have to subtract. Now you count how many times you have to subtract 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's your answer. So 15 divided by 3 is equal to 5. Let's do it again. 36 divided by 6. We start with the dividend, 36. We subtract the divisor, 6, until we reach 0. 36 minus 6 is equal to 30. Minus 6, it's 24. Minus 6, it's 18. Minus 6, it's 12. Minus 6, it's 6. Minus 6, it's 0. Now we count how many times we have to subtract. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We subtracted 6 times. We subtracted 6 times. So 6 is our answer. 36 divided by 6 is equal to 6. In this short video, you will learn how multiplication and division are related and how do you use arrays to solve division. I have 15 candies. They will be divided between three people. Sharing equally, each person gets five candies. Division is the opposite or inverse of multiplication. They are always connected. If you know the answer to a multiplication question, you can work out the division from it. Here's a great strategy we can use. When we multiply or divide, we can use an array to help us. An array is a group of objects set out in rows and columns so they are easy to count. This array has two rows and three columns. You can count it and see six. And you can multiply any array out. Two rows times three columns is six. If we have the question six divided by three, we are making groups of three. You can see we get two groups of three. Six divided by three is two. If our question is six divided by two, we are making groups of two you can see we get three groups of two. Six divided by two is three. Let's try a slightly bigger array. Three rows times four columns is 12. If we have the question 12 divided by four, we are making groups of four. You can see we get three groups of four. 12 divided by four is three. If we have the question 12 divided by 3, we are making groups of 3. You can see we get 4 groups of 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Here's another array. 3 rows times 6 columns is 18. If we have the question 18 divided by 6, we are making groups of 6. There are three lots of six in 18, and 18 divided by six is three. If the question was 18 divided by three, we would make groups of three. There are six groups of three in 18. So 18 divided by three is six. I hope you can see how you can use an array to help you with division and use your times table knowledge to help you too. What is 9 divided by 3? Think about a related multiplication fact and turn it into a multiplication problem. 3 times what number is equal to 9? 
So we start with the divisor. The divisor becomes one of the factors. The dividend becomes the product. And the quotient is the second unknown factor. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3. Let's do it again. 48 divided by 8. How do we turn it into a multiplication problem? 8 times what number is equal to 48? 8 times 6. So 48 divided by 8 is equal to 6. What rules for division can help you divide with 1? Let's say you have only one fish bowl and three fish. Because there is only one fish bowl, all of the fish must go in that fish bowl. Let's put them there. You can create a division sentence from the picture. Start with the number of fish. The dividend is the total number. There are three fish. Then put the number of bowls in the sentence. The number of groups is the divisor. There is one bowl. Now put the number of fish in each bowl in the sentence. The number in each group is the quotient. There are three fish in each bowl. So 3 divided by 1 is 3. This is a rule of division. Any number divided by 1 equals that number. Now let's say you have 3 bowls and 3 fish. If you have the same number of fish and bowls, then each bowl gets 1 fish. You can create a division sentence from the picture. Start with the number of fish. There are three fish. Now put the number of bowls in the sentence. There are three bowls. Now put the number of fish in each bowl in the sentence. There is one fish in each bowl. So three divided by three is one. This is another division rule. Any number except zero divided by itself equals one. What rules for division can help you divide with zero? Let's say you have zero fish and three fish bowls. If there are no fish, then there will be zero fish in the bowls. You can create a division sentence from the picture. Start with the number of fish. There are zero fish. Now, put the number of bowls in the sentence. There are three bowls. Now, put the number of fish in each bowl in the sentence. There are zero fish in each bowl. So, zero divided by three is zero. This is another division rule. Zero divided by any number except zero equals zero. Now, let's say you have zero bowls and three fish. If you have zero bowls, then you can't separate the fish into bowls. This is another division rule. You cannot divide by zero. Let's solve a multi-step problem. Madeline bought three packs of pens and one notebook for $22. The notebook cost $4. Each pack of pens cost the same amount. What is the price of one pack of pens? First, what information do you need to find? You need to find the price of one pack of pens. What information do you need to use? You need to use how much Madeline spent in all. Madeline spent $22 in all. You also need to use the number of packs of pens and notebooks she bought. Madeline bought three packs of pens and one notebook. You're also given the cost of one notebook, which is $4. Now let's plan how to use this information. You can act out the problem using counters to represent dollars. 
Now let's solve the problem. Start with 22 counters to represent the total cost of pens and notebook. The total cost of pens and notebook is $22. Take away 4 counters to represent the cost of the notebook. So why are you subtracting $4 from 22? You need to subtract $4 from 22 to find the cost of 3 packs of pens. So $22 minus $4 equals P. The letter P stands for the unknown in the equation. So how many counters are still left? 22 minus 4 equals 18. Now you know that the three packs of pens cost $18. To find the cost of one pack of pens, make an array with the 18 remaining counters. You need to make three equal rows with the 18 counters. How many counters are in each row? 6. Let's show an equation for this model. The 18 counters are equally divided to make how many rows? 3. In each row, there are how many counters? 6 counters. So $18 divided among 3 packs of pens is $6 per pack. Therefore, What's the price of each pack of pens? So the price of one pack of pens is $6. Let's solve another problem. Megan buys three books for $5 each. She pays with the $20. How much money does she have left? When solving problems with more than one type of operation, you need to know which operation to do first. A special set of rules called the order of operations gives the order in which calculations are done in a problem. Let's use the order of operations to solve this problem. To use the order of operations, first multiply and divide from left to right. And then Add and subtract from left to right. To use the order of operations to solve the problem, first multiply from left to right. What's 3 times $5? 3 times $5 is equal to $15. Now subtract from left to right. What's $20 minus $15? $20 minus $15 is equal to $5. So Megan has $5 left.